Rems have been a staple in web development for many years now. I was actually around in web development before Rems were even in existence, right? You used to use pixels for everything, but I'm seeing a huge misconception around accessibility that Rem units apparently solve. And I wanna show you that maybe we shouldn't be using Rems all of the time. Okay, so what I've got here is like a basic use case of a card um, and the padding around it, which is the thing we're gonna focus on right now. Pretty much everything is using REMS, but it's easiest to show you in paddings. There are two ways an accessibility user might increase the visibility of their of the website they're viewing, right? Most of us will press Command and Plus and we'll increase the size of it. The other way, if we go to settings here, this is gonna be the more common way site accessibility impairments will do. They'll, they'll have a setting or they'll override the font size of of the website and what you'll see is the the padding itself is nice and it's moving fluidly with the the, the text the size of the font i understand why uh, de uh designers particularly in the no code space want to use rem units they want to maintain their design across different scaling of a design as it goes through different breakpoints, different font sizes and things like that. The issue here in that many scenarios, because of the reduction of space, because of the padding and the generally the font size getting bigger, the text is then forced into, it's forced to be longer. So really we wanna be fixing that values of certain paddings and margins so that only the text is allowed to grow to the size it needs without being pushed around, moved around and extended beyond what's necessary. So you've got 16 pixels there we increase it we still got that 16 pixels another common example is you've got a bunch of cards here on the screen all of the gaps the paddings are all separated by rems but if I change the font size then you can see the content is running off of the screen you need to scroll down to actually get that content so a small change we could make is making these pixel values so I'll undo all this we can actually read all of the font that's on the screen, which means we don't need to scroll. The truth is, is that especially in these sort of requirements of accessibility needs, we shouldn't be favoring the designs, the content that we need to be respectful of. In cases where we're increasing patterns and margins, which is then pushing text off of screens and, and breaking it onto new lines and things like that, this is counterintuitive to this whole idea where REMS are an accessible way to build a website design. Now, this does bring into question things like Tailwind and Client First, more specifically for, for Webflow users, where they rely heavily on REM units for their spacing. Client First has an amazing breakdown of exactly what I've told you with regards to zooming in and out and then setting the default font size. But they don't do an incredibly good job of explaining when and where really to use them based on the idea that you might not want spacing to increase with the font size because it extends text off of the screen and various things like that. Now, I'm still discovering this. I'm still um, mulling over all this information because Tailwind is a very reliable resource when it comes to CSS and uh, like good practices but maybe it's a case of that these values are only meant to be used in certain ways. My lesson here is that we need to be more conscientious about when and where to use pixel units versus REM units. Now, like I say, I was around before REMs were part of the spec. And when REMs first came in, we were told that REMs were only for font sizes because of this very reason, accessibility reasons. As time went on, I sort of started to listen to or hear more people talk about use REMs, use REMs, use REMs. And on some of my latest projects, I have been just default using REMs for absolutely everything. I saw this video inevitably going back to basics, going back to this idea that REMs really should be used for uh, font sizes alone. Because that's the only thing that you really want changing with respect to the user's zoom setting or the the user's over uh, font size override. Really, this is me resetting myself back to when REM units first came in, and I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually start using pixel units for paddings and margins and things like that. Probably 90 percent of the time for this very reason that yes, the design is gonna sacrifice at those bigger font sizes, but ultimately I'm favoring the content as opposed to maintaining 
the design. I'd love to know in the comments if you can think of other use cases where REM is a, is a sensible unit. I mean, border radius might be quite a nice one to use REM on because it's a nice way to maintain design and it's not really sacrificing content. Breakpoints is also another sensible one to use REMs for. I hope you're listening, Webflow. Maybe you convince me otherwise, but realistically, I think we've defaulted to REMs for all the wrong reasons, to favor design over content. Thanks for tuning in. I'm incredibly unwell, so I, <laughs> sorry if I look like shit, but until next time, happy no coding.